The S&P 500 continues lower after the dead cat bounce, and the tech sector is still relatively looking the strongest. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. Today's SPY was down 0.63%. And again, this is just looking like a rejection from the 200 daily moving average at that critical resistance at 393. And yes, I was saying yesterday was just a dead cat bounce. When you get a dead cat bounce, you have to be very careful thinking that it's bullish because it's simply just correcting this oversold condition. And we did come right up to resistance and get rejected yet again. Now keep in mind a dead cat bounce can eventually turn into something more and I did talk about the possibility of this turning into a higher low into a higher high. So if we continue higher and break 393 after getting this higher low, it will start looking like more than just a dead cat bounce. But as I always say, we need the price action to prove it and there is no reason trying to predict that we're going to get the higher high. Simply wait until price action breaks above 393. Above 393 will likely start running up towards the next resistance zone between 398 and 400. And if we continue lower, we're likely coming back down towards this support I have at 380 and then 377. Remember, if we break 377, that is full-blown panic selling capitulation and we're going much lower. So I don't don't necessarily expect that to be a very easy support level to break down. So if you are wanting to take long risk, you want to do that down near these support levels and then reduce your long exposure as we come up near this critical resistance area. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.52% today. And again, the tech sector is still looking relatively the strongest and very simply said the tech sector held support at 294. We have SPY rejecting resistance and the triple Qs holding support, so there is obviously a lot of relative strength in the big tech sector. Above 294, we're likely reaching the top of the range at 299 to 300, and that's exactly where we bounced to today. Now keep in mind, this is not a higher high until we close above 300, and we are very close to doing so. So if you are a long trader, you should not be expecting that resistance to break. You should have locked your profits and wait for that resistance to break to continue the upside. If you get in the habit of locking your profits at resistance, you can put that cash back to work if we get rejected and you want to be buying down here near the support zone at 294 and 290. Remember just last night I drew this out that it was possible we came back down to 294 and then bounced to the higher high and so far it looks like that could be the possible scenario that we're going to get. We just need the confirmation now with the price action breaking above 300 and then we'll have the higher low into the higher high. There's no reason trying to guess if it's going to happen, wait for price action to prove it. If we lose support at 294 and 290, we have the critical support at 286, and then below that, it should be a very quick trip down to 280, and then the gap fell at 273. On the Dow Jones, we were down 0.82%, and again, the Dow Jones dead cap bounce got rejected below the 200 daily moving average, and price action is still below all of the moving averages with the bear trend, with a very good possibility we're coming down to close the gap at 311. The gap close at 311 is going to require the break of support at 318, and as you can tell, the Bollinger Bands are expanding, allowing price to go close that gap. Upside critical resistance remains 324 and 327. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were down 1.65% today. And again, we are extremely oversold yet again after that one day dead cat bounce. We're right back down to the critical support right around 170. Remember, if we break down below 170, that is full blown capitulation and we're going much lower. So this is extremely critical support that yes, you can take risk on at. You could buy at 170 knowing you need to get out if we close below it for the chance that we bounce back up towards 177 and the gap close at 181. And we're not getting bullish in the small caps until we can get back over that 200 daily moving average, which is right there at 181. On the RK ETF, we're up 0.79% today. So again, you're seeing the same theme where these tech stocks are showing relative strength because they don't have the financial sector in them. However, with that being said, this is still a very clear downtrend below 39. So it is risk off at the resistance zone right here, right around 38. If we get rejected from 38, you're looking for a breakdown below 37 to come back down to 34.6 and then likely the gap fill below 32. You're only getting bullish if we can clear back over 39 and then right around 41 because that will be the higher low, higher high and that will look like a bullish breakout. On the VIX, we were up 10.07%, so the VIX is still elevated and still trading above 24 and still spiking out near the upper Bollinger Band, so it's still a very volatile market. Just remember, volatility does work in both directions, so with the high VIX, you need to be very cautious of very wild swings in high volatility, 
and do keep in mind it's going to remain volatile while the VIX is above 20. On Bitcoin, we're currently down about 0.4% and Bitcoin is trying to get this bullish breakout at 25, but these Bollinger Bands are not expanded enough to allow Bitcoin to climb higher, so it's going to take some time and some churning around and possibly some consolidation. The bull breakout is 25,000, that sends us to 30,000, and the critical support will be down here right around 24,400 and the 20 daily moving average at 23,000. On Google stock, we are up 2.28% and Google is getting that bullish breakout above the resistance at 95.6 after getting that strong bounce off of the channel bottom low of support at 91. Above 95.6, we can start running all the way back up to 102. So this is a very decent long trade with the risk set right here, right around 95 or the 50 EMA right around 94. If we break down below those supports, we could revisit 91 and then below that, we'll likely go make new lower lows below 88 but you can stay bullish as long as we're above the channel bottom low. On Amazon stock, we were up 1.39% and Amazon is also getting that bullish breakout above the 50 EMA of resistance right around 96. From here, we should be able to run up to 98 and then above 98, we test critical resistance at 102. And if we can break critical resistance, we should easily start marching higher towards 109 and then 115. For bulls, use this risk level down here right around 94 because if we break that, we could come back down to 90 and then the gap fill at 86. On Microsoft stock, we were up 1.78% today and we hit our price target and blasted right through it, which was that gap fill at 262. And we went straight to the next price target up here at 266. We found sellers instantly at that level, and as you can tell, the Bollinger Bands are squeezing, so it's going to be a very difficult ride for Microsoft to continue to go higher from here. For that reason, look for strong resistance right around 266 to 267, with a very good chance we come back down to test this as support in the 260s. On NVIDIA stock, we were up 0.69%, and NVIDIA is back over the support for the second day in a row, which is the support trend line, which is now at 237. We get the bull breakout above 244, which should send us on a short squeeze to close the gap at 258, and that should be very critical resistance. You can stay bullish above 237, but if we break 237, we're likely coming down towards 227, and below 227, we get the bearish breakdown to close the gap at 211. On Tesla stock, we were down 1.53%, and Tesla is finding resistance right where we would expect, which is this level at 183. Below 183, we're finding resistance, which could send us back down towards 173 and 167. And if we break all of that support, we're very likely going down here to fill the gap at 146. Remember, Tesla is a downtrend of lower highs and lower lows. So be very cautious if you're still bullish on Tesla because 146 is likely where we are headed. And that is a long ways lower. However, if we break 183, then you can start getting a little more bullish for the possibility to run back up towards 193 to 197. So only get bullish at this point if we can clear the resistance at 183. On Apple stock, we were up 0.26% today and Apple is looking a lot better after the second day in a row above the support at 150 and continuing to build out this inverse head and shoulders look with the neckline up here at 156. So for that reason, we're getting bullish if we break the neckline at 156 and then we're getting a lot more cautious if we break down below support at 150 because we do have a gap to fill at 146. On the financial sector, we were down 2.67% today as we continue to see this capitulation type selling and we're outside the lower Bollinger Band yet again and we're starting to find buyers around this support for the second time now, which is right around 3137 this is somewhat of a hammer candle look and we do have a gap to fill right around 32, so there is a good chance we're due for another dead cat bounce. On the industrials, we were down 2.46% today as the industrials are getting very close to our price target down here at 95, which is our rising 200 daily moving average, and we do have a gap to fill at 98. If we continue lower, there's a good chance we bounce off of 95 and then go fill the gap above. On the healthcare sector, we were down 0.09% and the healthcare sector is still bearish, making lower highs and lower lows and still in a downtrend. And to get bullish, we'll need to break above 127 and then 129. However, we are still in a downtrend as long as we're below 130. On the energy sector, we were down 5.37%, getting way outside the lower Bollinger Band, and we did close the gap at 76, so we can delete that gap, and we now have a gap to fill to the upside at 80.3. This is very oversold, and this is very likely a dead cap bounce back up towards 80 to fill the gap, and then after that, the Bollinger Bands will expand and likely allow the energy sector to go fill the gap down here at 73, so we are still looking for lower price targets while we have the downtrend. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, as you can tell, a lot of those dead cat bounces played the course and we're continuing lower, but there is relative strength in the tech sector because we are seeing a lot of the issues only in the financial sector. 
that's going to hurt SPY and the Dow Jones way more than the triple Qs, and that's why you're seeing so much relative strength in the NASDAQ 100. However, just be aware if there are black swan events, all bets are off and all of the indices should start crashing as a whole. So continue to manage your risk very well because we are near some very critical support levels. Remember, the trend still says lower highs and lower lows, which means every time we get a bounce, there is a very good chance that bounce is just to a lower high before we go put in the next lower low. So get in the habit of understanding what the current trend is and you'll have a much smoother ride trading in the market once you know where the trend is pushing price to next. Try not to fight the trend because you're going to have a much simpler time trading if you go with the direction of the trend. If you want to come trade with other price action traders and get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis, you need to come join us over at the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community. You can find out how to join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link below. I also have a trade alert service called Bank Trade Alerts that will send you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message, and it only trades the ETF CQQ and SQQ. You can find out how to join Bank by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.